All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. Got to rest your brain this weekend, all that good stuff. We are coming into a shortened week in the stock market this week, with also a half day on Wednesday before the 4th of July. So the market may feel a little bit slow, but we do have some good data coming out this week. So there's definitely some things to pay attention to. If you tuned in last week, we had a pretty good list, actually. We had two setups play out out of the three. We had Unity Software calls on watch that actually had a really good day the first day. Monday, I believe it rallied almost 5%. I think that still has some room to go because it really didn't retrace all that much. And really, it was more of an intraday move on Monday. And maybe Tuesday and Wednesday as well had a nice bounce. But overall, there's still a lot of room to retrace and it's still pretty oversold. So definitely keep Unity Software on watch. We also have BIC puts, which we actually took and I alerted that one. That was the one trade I alerted out of the list last week. That played out pretty nice, broke down the rising wedge we were looking for. I believe it bounced the last couple sessions though. So the breakdown really didn't last long and we took profit at the right spot. We also had Diz calls on watch, but that really didn't do much. There was a couple pops earlier in the week, but overall did not see that follow through on the breakout and it did break down and go back within the downtrend line. Now starting to make some new local lows here after breaking a structure low. So Diz did not play out how I wanted to see it. And it's probably gonna need to go ahead and hold that low and also get back outside the downtrend line before it even does anything and starts looking bullish again. And for trades last week, we did have these QQQ calls. I believe this was a scalp, we probably did that on Monday. We also had these BAC puts. That's the ones I was talking about from our list last week. I also had one stop out here Thursday, I believe, and then also a stop out on Friday. And then I got back in, actually made 10%, but it rejected this structure that I was looking at. So I didn't like it, luckily, because this actually tanked even more. So I made a good call getting out there, but overall on the day, I did end up a little bit red. I believe I called out another QQQ call scout in the chat, just didn't alert it. And we made 15% on that. So I believe I ended the day like down like 70 bucks or something on QQQ from this stop out right here. And the only thing new that I really opened and that's still open last week was Airbnb. So I'm looking at these Airbnb 150 calls. There's a big gap. Hopefully we can fill that. So pretty good week. I mean, we had a pretty strong streak going here and overall it did end on Thursday. And also I got to stop out on Friday as well. Streak came to an end, but overall really good week. All right, and before we get into our setups, let's go ahead and get into the economic calendar real quick. Monday, July 1st, we do have S&P final US manufacturing PMIs and also ISM manufacturing. So one at 945 and another at 10. These can definitely move the market. Pay attention to these at 945 and 10. Tuesday, we do have Chair Jerome Powell speaking in Portugal, I guess. Not exactly sure if he's going to comment on monetary policy or what he's even talking about. So we'll have to see how that goes. We also have Jolt's job openings at 10. This can definitely, definitely move the market. So pay attention on Tuesday as well, especially at 10 a.m. Wednesday, another Fed speaker in Portugal. I'm guessing they're probably on the same trip. Also have S&P final U.S. services PMI and also ISM services. So we do have the manufacturing for PMIs and also ISM on Monday. And then we also have the services side for ISM and PMIs on Wednesday. And then they dropped the Fed minutes as well at 2 p.m. So this will be the minutes from the last meeting. All it is is just pretty much the meeting in black and white. Maybe we'll see something new. Maybe we'll see something people didn't pick up on, but usually it's all the same stuff that you heard in the last FOMC meeting. Markets closed on Thursday. Nothing going on there. Enjoy your holiday. And then Friday is arguably the biggest day of the week. We do have the non-farm payrolls. This is extremely important. We also get to see the unemployment rate, which recently upticked to 4% and also U.S. hourly wages. So Friday is the big one, but we are pretty stacked because we do have those PMIs and ISM services on Wednesday. We also have Joel's job openings on Tuesday and also manufacturing manufacturing PMIs and ISMs on Monday as well. So pretty stacked week for data. You definitely might see some knee-jerk reactions to these data sets. They're pretty big, especially in the bond market for like PMIs and ISMs. The bond market, TLT, stuff like that moves pretty big. It's pretty sensitive to this data. So pay attention to it. It's going to be a pretty big week potentially. And we'll go over the seasonality real quick. I didn't go over it last week. I actually forgot to add it. So my apologies on that if you didn't get it last week, but we'll go over it real quick this week. Here is July 1st to the 5th. We do have a summarized profit at negative 1%. Winning trades to the long side at 58%. So a pretty nice uptick here for July, basically the whole month. And then when August comes, we definitely kind of get into that summertime mode and markets really slow down, especially in September as well. And if we go to the 10 year data set, it's actually a little bit better, but keep in mind, sample size is lower. There's less data here. This is the last 10 years. We have winning trades at 70% to the long side. And also I summarized profit at 3%. So pretty bullish for 10 year, a little bit neutral for the 20, but overall pretty much see an uptick in both looking pretty bullish even my almanac is showing 
first day of july pretty good day for the market we'll see how that goes to the upside maybe we can have a nice bullish day all right and on to the setups we'll try to go over these as quick as possible i don't want this video to be too long i try to keep it within 20 to 30 minutes the way i'm not boring you and making you fall asleep our first setup here we'll go over our target it's pretty straightforward it's starting to poke out of this downtrend it's obviously been in, in a pretty gnarly downtrend since april we have a test one a test two a test three you can probably count this as a test four of the general area small rejection here now starting to curl up kind of got a little mini inverse head and shoulders here shoulder head shoulder and overall it looks pretty good to break out we are starting to get over the moving averages so that's good close over the 9 21 ema combo and pretty good volume closing out here on friday as well also strong 200 sma support bounce bounce that's what these dots are that is the 200 sma the positive macd to the upside that's good as well and also strong support at 139 so probably just round this up to 140 flat so that's for tgt looking at calls is pretty simple for levels you have one right here 156 we'll probably have to break over 150.79 which is this one right here. So over 150.79 could take you to 156.93 or just 157. So that's for target, looking at calls. Might need a little bit more confirmation of this breakout. You could even wait for it to get over 150.79 if you want to be more careful. You could even right click it, hit add alert. We'll call it breakout. Then you hit create. That way once price starts getting over 150.79, you will be alerted. All right, number two, we're going over cat. This is pretty straightforward. It is a little mini inverse head and shoulders, kind of like what you saw on target, just a little bit more obvious with a really nice neckline. So we need to get over that 335.17. That is the neckline. And also 333.17. 67 which is kind of like another neckline sort of so you have a little peak wick right here and also another peak right here so that little zone is your neckline and for inverse head and shoulders it's really simple once you get the break you can go long obviously you might have limited upside up to the downtrend line here so we can project maybe up to 340 maybe a little bit higher but like i said you do want to wait for that neckline breakout to be a little bit more sure so if you want you can right click it and add alert We'll name it neckline. So that's for cat, really straightforward. We are over the 921 EMA combo. It closed over the cloud. Positive MACD, similar to target. So they're both kind of similar. I guess cat just doesn't have that breakout kind of setting up. I guess if you drew like this, it has already broken out, but it's not like the best downtrend line. There's not really a third test rejection right here or anything. So we'll go with that little inverse head and shoulders. Keep that on watch over 335s sets you up for a potential big pop up into the downtrend line here and that would be decent so cat looking at calls be patient wait for the neckline break all right number three we'll go over dvn this is another breakout play i really like these downtrend breakout plays because they are a little bit more discounted than if you're buying a horizontal breakout as such like if it's going vertical when you have a established downtrend line that's been going and going and going and consolidating down and taking its time there are people accumulating for this and when it breaks out that really sets up for a big power move at a more reasonable discount and you have a little bit less drawdown risk than if you were to chase a top so that's why i like those downtrend line breakouts stuff like this it looks pretty good you can see for dvn here it's pretty obvious we have a small rejection point at 47.78 just this 50 percent fibonacci level so if you want to just draw out this fibs you can do that i can even get rid of everything and show you how to do it just hit the fib tool start at the low you go to the high and there's your fibs come out with a downtrend line go like this you have a test one, test two, test three, test four rejections. So this is a very strong downtrend line. And that's all it is. Held the 61.8 Fibonacci, my favorite level. It's called the golden ratio. And it does need to get over that 50% to go higher. Simple as that. We are consolidating pretty good off the 200 SMA here. MACD is positive. Over the 921 EMA combo as well. This 50 SMA could act as resistance. So be careful of that. It's about the upper 48s, about 4880 currently, but this will change after each daily close. So just watch that 50 SMA as potential resistance. And that's really about it. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting for 47.78 to break out. If you really do want to enter before it breaks out and you're speculating on the fact that it could break out of this, I'll buy more time because you're not really confirmed here yet uh, breaking over resistance. So that's for DVN. Looking at calls, looking pretty good, breaking out. Hasn't really seen that big fall through to the upside after this kind of more medium term downtrend line. 
All right, and on to the indexes. The first we'll go over is SPY as we do every week. Last week, we went down into the shorter term time frames because there's not really a one day setup at the moment. Our level of focus was 543.61 to 543. That was kind of the zone you want to look for dip buys. Here was the first thing Monday, really nice rip to the upside. So it was a good scalping week if you're going long at this 543 area, or even if it went back above 543.60s, there's multiple times you could have went long. A couple of fake outs to the downside, but over overall structure was holding. You didn't really have a convincing bar or follow through to the downside after breaking 543. Even this one, this big bearish red bar right here, the day after was immediately followed with upside holding the base. Same thing right here, flushed a new low, held up the base. So it's actually kind of choppy all week until Friday here. That's when we had a pretty big breakout. All it did was go up to the recent 550 high. And that's really the max we could project if we were to expect upside in the market. That was kind of our max point because we don't have any other resistance nearby. So that was the logic last week. Support at the 543s. If you wanted to see downside, you needed that to break the 543.60s to 543, kind of like this, but we had no follow through. And if we did have meaningful follow through that actually had volume and more participants, probably would have seen, you know, 539s. But overall, choppy week held up. There was no volatility signals, no big moves in the VIX or anything. So there really wasn't anything flashing like a big pullback or anything. It was pretty much just a scalp week. Because I mean, if you swing traded this all week, you probably got chopped up because we didn't do anything until Friday. So it's the same thing this week, 543. 361 to 543 market that is your support if we open up holding this bulls are still kind of in control as we saw last week we had a really big dip into it on friday and look at this massive wick i mean this is like two points which is pretty big for spy uh, in 15 minutes so pretty big support it held up nice i think futures are holding relatively flat so we did not break the structure low yet it's still pretty bullish we can go check out the one day as well really quick i believe we just bounced off the one day 921 ema that's always a setup up when in doubt by the 921 EMA because you are buying a higher low as we've seen I mean millions of times pulls in right here bounce got a bounce right here pulls in and eh. Didn't tap it directly, but close enough. Shoppy hold up, but overall did set up for another high right there. So as long as the 921 cloud is holding, it's hard to be bearish here. And like I said, uh, a break under 543, like a meaningful break, that can set you up for something bigger. We do have a gap right here. So there's your gap. I know it's kind of ugly when we zoom out here because we have all these levels. But like I said, we had to go down to the short term time frames to see things a little bit more clearly since we are kind of choppy and in a melt-up pattern. So that's for SPY. It's the same thing as last week, holding the same levels as last Friday. Also the same levels as we did all the way up into Wednesday and Thursday. So just mark those levels. I can even draw them again for you if this is your first time watching. We'll just redo the whole thing for fun. So all we do, we take this Fibonacci tool. We start at this high. We go down to this low. And then you should have a 1.272 marked and also a 1.618. Give them both checks. That gave us our level back here a couple weeks ago multiple weeks ago and that gave us our recent kind of resistance and new support recently so that's how we got it and then we kind of just go down to the short term time frames we figured out 543 was a good low from here from last friday so that's how we got that and that's kind of your zone the 54360s to 543 and then you have this high right here and that's really it i guess you could have marked this as well because you had a multi-bottom right here you had a resistance right there resistance right here also kind of a flush right here when i got back under 546 you can mark that too if you want and that's your levels your short-term stuff and then below obviously we drew that gap that comes from all the way over here so this is the unfilled gap so far and that's about it make it a gap hit okay make sure it's all unfilled and this is all unfilled no price has been through this yet and that's your levels for spy all right and on to qqq so last week was pretty similar to spy we had to go down to the short-term time frames to figure out our supports because uh, I mean, it's pretty choppy. Wasn't any really big one day supports we could zoom out and find. So we found that 478.39 was kind of our support. And you could see we flushed it here on Monday. So we kind of did rally off of it a little bit right here. But I want to show you this. We flushed it, it came back up, and this back test turned into resistance. So that made a good put scalp. And I think I had some arrows. I think it was had some arrows like this. Like I had, you know, 478 holds, you have that. And then 478, you know, flushes, it could take you back down to the gap area that's basically what it did once it lost it so that's all trading is is you know if one level holds it can do this if it doesn't hold it can do this that's all trading is and that's what we did on um, monday it looked like we maybe wanted to reclaim it 
But obviously you would have went invalid on this bar right here, this really big flush bar. So that invalidated the bullish thesis and it started acting as a resistance. So that was just for Monday. Overall, later in the week, you can see we came back, held a pretty good structure. You kind of have a little resistance right here. So the 478 came in clutch. I mean, you could have scalped it a couple of different times, you know, using calls using puts, using puts back here, using calls right here and right here. So it became pretty clutch. And then we also had that uh, 483, which came from this structure low right here. So that acted as resistance right here to the general area. So that was a good price target as well. And then overall, you just had your obvious, you know, all time high, which is at 486 or this double top area. And that's what we rejected off of. So levels are pretty good. These are what we have marked. So I'll definitely mark them again. The only thing we're gonna do is add this new low right here at 473 and that's really it you kind of got a little trend break here so obviously that would have been good for puts once that broke you could even mark it like this as well just like that test one test two test three test four breakdown pretty nice for puts so yeah there's a couple ways to go about last week but overall levels are pretty accurate price was respecting them just kind of have to find your way and how you want to trade it some people like to use old supports as you know new resistance Use uh, old supports that reclaim as support again like this. Using old support as resistance. There's a couple ways to go about it. But just make sure to mark these because they are important and prices obviously respecting them on SPY and QQQ. I think I did also mention you could wait for QQQ to pull into the 921 EMA combo, which we did first thing Monday. And I mentioned that probably looked like a pretty good dip buy. I mean, we went up maybe 1% the day after we dipped into it a little bit more. And then on Friday, obviously, it was a big push. But overall, it was very choppy for three days before we got that big push. So the 921 combo buy worked pretty good as usual. I mean, it worked right here. It worked right here. It worked right here. It was working for months before that as well. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So the 921 combo on the one day is always a good setup. It works more than it doesn't. Obviously, you can get fake outs where you, you know, flush another 921 cloud, put in a big wick like this. But the important thing is pay attention to the close because if you get a big wick under this, but you get the close back right here, that's setting you up for something like this. And there's plenty of examples of price breaking the 921, but then reclaiming and then continuing the uptrend right here, broke down, reclaimed held broke down here but reclaimed it up here held pretty good broke down right here reclaimed held really good so the 921 is a really good indicator on the one day time frame well it's good on all time frames but on the one day you can really find good discounts higher lows to buy at areas that people don't want to buy at because a lot of people they like to just chase the highs instead of waiting for the pullbacks the pullbacks give you the best risk to reward you get cheaper premiums sometimes even get paid faster because it bounces so quick. And then when you're kind of buying into highs like this, you put in a new high, you get stuck in chop. You put in a new high, you get stuck in chop. You put in a new high, you get stuck in consolidation, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you buy at the moving averages like this, the snapback is so quick, it just pays really good. But yeah, that's really it. Same levels as last week for QQQ. I don't have anything new for you. We have the 47830s from last week. It's the same level. So it was old res right here. It was support last Friday, breakdown level here support here last week also another bounce level right here for this big candle end of day friday which obviously had more fall through to the downside but really big wick reaction off of that so you want to mark it so you got 478 that is your support look for call scalps if that's holding same thing if it gets back down to 473.82 or you probably just call it 474 to get to 474 you can look for a dip by there as well you have res at 483.37 which is a rejection right here and the big res at 486.86 which is all-time high and then like i said 921 combo is still holding the only thing is you kind of do have a pretty aggressive rejection here from the all-time high and also a negative macd same thing with the spy they both kind of rejected pretty aggressive but overall we are still holding the 921 combo the main thing i would get too bearish on qqq until it gets under you know the 473s and then for spy i wouldn't get bearish until it gets under the 543s like i was showing you or maybe even inside this gap area at the 540s all right and last but not least we'll go over the vix which is same old shit just a different week we're still holding the 1237 we still held the 1182 and i always just highlight how important these multi-bottom lows are because it never gives up hasn't given up for weeks didn't give up back here didn't give up right here it didn't give up right here and it didn't give up here on friday either and then 1367 the same number we go over every single week look at this rejection all the way from monday back down into the lows we didn't get a single one day close over that 1367 and look at the result same thing back here i mean 
we could not close over it and it just resulted in more downside. And then once we get to the lows, it just picks back up and it keeps messing with people. So the VIX does look pretty coiled here to maybe head back higher again. Max upside, I got 1367 as usual. If the VIX does want to pop here on the moving averages, we don't really have anything new. We kind of did reject the 50 SMA back here last week at the same time as the 1367. So that 1367 plus the 50 SMA, we want to close over that eventually. If you want to see a big pullback in the market. But for right now, people are hedging as soon as it hits these lows. Obviously, as soon as the VIX hits these levels, people are loading up on SPX puts and keeps making it drive higher. Every time we hit these lows at 1237, at 1182, same thing, you know, they go long once volatility gets to 1367 and it's, you know, rejecting, people start going long the market again and it just does the same thing over and over. I mean, we really haven't gotten out of this 1367 range to 1182 since May. We did get over it briefly right here, but immediately followed on Friday with this big downside candle, more aggression at 1367 with more downside. So it's the same shit, different week. Like I said earlier, MACD is positive. That's a good sign. If you want to see the VIX go higher. But overall, nothing new. It will need to get back over the 921 cloud, this little red zone right here. It kind of started doing it last week and we did get a little bit of upside with minimal pullbacks in the market, but it didn't really signal us anything because we didn't close over the 1367. So 1367 has always been the major volatility signal we want to see. It close over that. I said it probably the last five or six weeks I've dropped this video. 1367 is the magic number. Same thing with these lows. If you really want to see a higher blow off top in the market, obviously it will need to start getting under the 1182 and we start getting to historic lows on volatility. You're not really going to see like a big like blow off top move on the SPY. It'll just keep melting up because volatility is kind of staying put here. It's not going lower and it's not going higher either, but a big VIX breakdown and capitulation move that sets you up for a bigger SPY candle up, a bigger breakout without this lame pullback every time it puts in a new high. So you got a big breakout candle here, lots of consolidation, small breakout candle, consolidation, breakout, consolidation breakout and it's kind of slowly going up like this isn't like a huge move or anything and i feel like it's just going to keep melting like this as long as the vix is kind of staying put at least until it flushes that 1182 low which i think is pretty important to see a big blow off top move in the spy but yeah that's really all i got keep staying cautious at these vix lows I definitely am not going to be going long the SPY, at least for a swing trade. I'm fine with scalping calls. I did it on QQQ on Monday. But until I start seeing these levels give up, I'm kind of assuming every time we get to this, people are loading up on hedges because they might be expecting a pullback in the market. There's really no other explanation. Every time we get down here, obviously SPX puts are being loaded, which then causes a reaction in the VIX and it goes higher. Moves based off SPX options, calls and puts. So when there's more demand for puts and SPX, you're going to see VIX pop like this. So yeah, that's really it. I mean, the uh, 1182 and 1237 we've covered probably for a couple months now it's all the way from back here it's a multi-bottom low right here test 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 and then you have the major low at 1182 from right here december 2023 and that's all it is it hasn't given up yet but it hasn't really seen fall through yet either and that's why i think the 1367 if you get a close over that and then also a close over 15 as well so kind of rejected right here that will set you up for a bigger move so hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like comment and subscribe i need to charge my laptop it's getting kind of low don't want to kill the video I have to restart so i love you and i'm out there's a reason why xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas with over 2.5 million dollars paid in the last two years to contribute Users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.